World Cup qualifying began in Columbus with the USA win. A similar result tonight versus Mexico will qualify the United States for the World Cup next June. 447 days ago, on a field built for soccer, in the heartland of America, a journey began. A quest marked by dramatic celebration. Struggles in unfriendly confines. And unwavering heart in the face of challenge. All to earn entry in the sports pinnacle event. Now they return to where it began, poised to realize their dream against a bitter rival. Tonight, the United States of America competes to stand together as one team, one country at the World Cup. And within minutes, we'll have the kickoff for you as the USA gets ready to take on Mexico in this World Cup qualifier. The winner gets an automatic berth in Germany. They'll be able to clinch early with a few games still to spare. Here's the starting lineup for the USA, starting with Casey Keller in goal. The US is going to come out in a 4-4-2. Very two guys that are very important on Yehu Berthalter. They're going to have to mark Fonseca and they're going to have to mark Burgetti's. In the midfield, Beasley and Ralston, two guys that have to get up and down the wing, stop crosses, but get some crosses in, trying to get the ball up to Brian McBride and Landon Donovan. And for Mexico, no question about it, number nine, Jared Borghetti is their key player. He is their all-time leading goal scorer with 36 goals. He has 13 of those goals and welcome qualifying. The kickoff is next. We're getting ready now for this World Cup qualifier for Columbus. The hype is always there when these two clubs meet, and the game always seems to live up to that hype. We we'll hope that tonight's no exception here on ESPN Classic, Mexico in green, USA in white. Fonseca and Borghetti are over the ball. Two guys that can score plenty of goals from Mexico, and they bear watching tonight. And this one is underway. Nelson played it back. Marquez, number four, clears long. USA will get it on the left flank. Eddie Lewis played it up. Touched ahead of Chris Armas. And that goes out. We'd like to thank Budweiser and all of our U.S. soccer sponsors for allowing us to bring you this game without interruption. Ball is going to be long to Mexico. DeMarcus Beasley is down. That's never a good sign, Cello. He is just back from a recent injury, played in Holland, and he's still down on the field. But he's getting up slowly, but that's not a good sign for the U.S. Already not even a minute into the game, and Mexico does the right thing. They knock the ball out of bounds and make sure Beasley's okay. I'm going to tell you why it's really not a good sign. This is a kid that gets fouled a lot, but he bounces back up quicker than we've just seen him do it right now. Here's what you can see right there. He just gets stepped on by Rodriguez and turns his ankle a little bit. You know, there, I mean, there's really no foul there. He goes in, he tries to get the ball. Rodriguez steps on Beasley, and Beasley turns his ankle a little bit. DeMarcus holding on to the knees right around the halfway line as this ball goes out. And that's something the USA has to be concerned about. You don't want to have to use a sub early in the game, and Beasley's one of the most important players. You never want to make a sub early in the game, especially with one of your better players. Beasley getting to the game. He's going to be very effective down the left-hand side, so he's got to be 100%. Mexico starting lineup. Sanchez in goal. He has been their number one player through most of qualifying. He gets another opportunity to shine tonight. Mexico's coming out in a 4-4-2 in the back. Sacedo, Marquez, Davino, Rodriguez, solid players in the midfield. You got Nelson, you got Galindo. Dorado, Morales, four guys that are very good with the ball, very skillful and up front. You have two center forwards who are very good. Borghetti, who is very good in the air, and Fonseca on the floor has got great skill. Meanwhile, Casey Keller rolls it to the right. Frankie Hader who plays locally for Columbus in Major League Soccer. We'll play over to Greg Burhalter in the middle. Wide left to Eddie Lewis. Second straight game, Eddie Lewis has gotten the start at left back, but Bruce Arena told us today he expects Lewis to be tested much more tonight than he was against Trinidad and Tobago. Here's Beasley, looking better there. To Marcus Wide, and that's tackled away. But it's good to see him try to put on a move there. Might indicate he's okay. No, no, he looked good. He looked like he picked up some good pace. But like you're saying about Eddie Lewis, he's finally going to get tested. Trinidad got a guy taken out of the game by a red card. Really didn't get tested as a left back. 
this is a big game for Eddie Lewis. The U.S. is looking to get some depth. They're looking for a guy to play the left side with the left foot that can start. This is Eddie Lewis's second chance, and I think he'll do well in that position. Nearly three minutes gone in this first half of play. USA in white, Mexico in green, if you're just tuning in, here on ESPN Classic. Easy played it back. The halfway line. He recovers. Plays it all the way back towards Casey Keller. Another whistle and a foul there. And if you're Mexico, Beasley's one of the guys that you're going to go after whether he's hurt or not. Same with Landon Donovan. You can't teach speed. Beasley's very fast. The only way you can slow a guy down like that is, one, he's got to have his back towards goal, and two, you've got to keep fouling him to slow him down. And the same thing's going to happen with Landon Donovan. If he gets the ball enough, he's going to keep getting fouled because he's so fast that some of the Mexican defenders can't keep up with him. Armas. There's the USA on the attack on the left wing. Lewis sitting into the box, but Sanchez is there. But, and that's why it's going to be a good combination. Look at Eddie Lewis right now. He lost the ball. He's playing in the midfield. Beasley takes his place in the back. That interchange is going to be very important for that for that position. And it looks like already, what, three minutes into the game, five minutes into the game, sorry, they're already making that combination, and that's good. Great crowd on hand. I believe that we're seeing a lot more Mexican fans that we were certainly led to believe. Right behind the Mexico goal, it's all green and red. And that'll make the place louder. Fans encouraging the other fans to cheer on their team. That's one thing between U.S. and Mexico you're never going to lack, and that's atmosphere. Fans screaming and yelling for 90 minutes. Hate it to the right. Back to Anieru. Casey Keller. The cheering when the ball is played back to Keller is obviously from the Mexican contingent of fans here. As Casey clears. Two players missed out in the air. Donovan couldn't get it. McBride. Touched back by Reyna. Towards Borghetti. Anieru denied that. Here is Borghetti. Nelson, nickname is Senior, back to Rodriguez. And that's the USA crowd giving it to Sanchez. And the ball played back to him. This portion of the match brought to you by Comp USA. And this ball is going to roll out. I think the other thing we didn't really mention, the, the matchups between Anyewu and Borghetti. Last time in Mexico City, Borghetti took advantage of that. First time playing in Mexico, he took advantage of that, got the goals, got the assist. Tonight, that's going to be a key match. I'm sure Onyebu's already been matching up tight, hasn't let him out of his sight. And Bird Halter with Fonseca has got to keep a tight, tight grip on him just because of the fact you don't want these guys facing goal and running at you. Outside flag went up. We talked to Bruce Arena today. A couple of the keys that he mentioned, obviously stopping Borghetti, and then the flank play, he mentioned Ralston and Beasley. And we talked about it. That's a hard position. They're going to have to get up and back, get in the offense, but also draw back and make sure that Morales and Torado aren't getting crosses into Borghetti. Another foul call, the clash of the heads. Two players down. It's a quick restart, they're going to bring it back. They're going to bring it back. Two players that seem to be in some peril there. One is Brian McBride, and the other is Julio Davino. Remember, McBride had a game in a qualifier. We had to come out. But fortunately, he's up and okay, and the same with Davino. Two tough players. Free kick. Reyna, if it's right-footed. Eddie Lewis, if it's off the left. Reyna drives it inside. It was misplayed. Nobody there in white for the USA to collect it. And now it's set forward. No flag. Donovan at the end line. Looks up. Crosses on Yale. And Sanchez has it cleanly. Distributes on the left side to Moranes. Reyna breaks it up. The captain of the USA. Here is Reyna. Body Arena long to the left. That's Donovan. Cutting it back. Landon leaves it for Reyna. That's blocked. Toronto intercepts. 
And Mexico comes back on the right flank. Marquez in the middle. He plays for Barcelona. Marquez getting it back. We're in the captain's armband because Pardo is suspended. And here's a good example we talked about in the opening about the altitude. If you remember back to the Mexico game, Mexico came out on fire because they knew the altitude. The first five minutes are always hard. It's trying to get your second breath. And right here you can see it. Mexico's been more patient, more relaxed. The U.S. is putting the pressure. And the was very physical with Borghetti. And Borghetti trying to intimidate with the words. Onye will perhaps draw him into a yellow card, but he didn't. Uh, and it's going to be like that all game. Last game, Onye let Borghetti go one time, got caught ball watching. All of a sudden, the ball comes across. He gets beat to the ball, and the U.S. was down 1-0. So tonight, it's going to be different. He's going to stand a lot tighter, not going to let him turn. Morales drives it in, headed away by Reyna. Nelson, far side, Beasley up against him. Here is DeMarcus, who plays for PSV Eindhoven. Finding Donovan, trying to cut inside of two Mexico defenders. Sanchez, outside of his box, clears it away. Awkwardly. See, that to me, that's a mistake. You've still got the ball on your side of the field. He comes out like that, he's got to kick it to the other side of the field. Hit it 60, 70 yards down the other way and get your team out of that back. Hater. Keeping it on the ground to Berhalter. Plays for Energy Cutlass in Germany. He is their captain. Beasley. Donovan trying to return it. Those two guys combine well together. And they have since the under-17 level. Mexico back with it. Wide on the left side. And Hedick denied that. Denying Mexico the flanks. Tenet for Morales. Hedick had his man. And it will go harmlessly back towards Keller. Casey drives it off the white foot towards McBride in the air. He'll contest every ball in the air. It's going to be long for the USA. Brian McBride has scored goals in his last three World Cup qualifiers. Now the USA's all-time leading goal scorer in qualifying with 10. This portion of the match brought to you by Gatorade. Hayduk holding to Ralston. He plays for the New England Revolution. Going wide, crossing inside for McBride. Cleared away by Marquez. Here is Marquez playing it back. Mexico holding long on the left side, but Hayduk has Morales covered. Right, and you can already see the game plan from Mexico. I mean, with the attitude and the formation I think they came out, I think they'll be happy with a tie tonight. They're not really pushing. They're looking to hit the long ball over the top to see if they get to U.S. in a, in a funky, maybe off, uh, out of position somewhere. But this isn't typical Mexican soccer. Most of the time it's knock it in, knock it out. You knock it, you build it. You try to get it right now. It's been knocking it real slow, hitting a long ball into the corner. See if they can get Borghetti or Fonseca. And Fonseca hasn't even touched the ball yet. Marquez in the air, elbows rough between here and the drive. Now the referee's assistant has a flag up, and the foul is called by the referee, who is from Guatemala, Carlos Patres. So the USA have a free kick in the 12th minute, and Reyna will take it. According to computer rankings right now in England, Claudio Reyna, after four weeks, has been the best player in the English Premiership. That's incredible. The rating system that they have there, he is right now number one. He plays for Manchester City, and they're undefeated right now. He and Eddie Lewis over the ball. And there's a problem inside the box. Carlos Patres wants to have a good handle on it, so nothing happens. He knows the history, the rivalry. Reyna up there. Sanchez in a crowd. He's very calm there. And collects it, looks to boot it out, and does. Towards Morales. Hedick headed it away. So far, Hedick's done a good job on that flank, denying Morales any space. If you look at the right side, you've got Steve Terundolo, you've got Frankie Hedick. Two good, solid players. So you can't go wrong with either one. It's more about who can get into the attack with Ralston, who can get around more, who can partner up with Ralston a little better. You can see the left side already. Beasley and Eddie Lewis have already made an overlap. Beasley has covered. He's gone down the wing. We haven't really seen that too much on the right side. That's where the U.S. needs to find some balance in their attack. You mentioned Shu Angelo. They're very high on him, obviously, the USA, but he is injured. May or may not come back to play in one of those last couple of qualifiers. On the left side, here's Beasley. Looking. 
winner of this game qualifies early for Germany. That's what's at stake here as that's deflected out. You'd like to be able to qualify early so then you can try out some other players, give other guys a rest, take some of that pressure off. Long Washington. way to go in this game, but you're right. If the U.S. can happen to win today, you can send some of the European players home, and you can give some of your MLS guys to see how they how they can handle that kind of atmosphere on the road and, and that kind of World Cup pressure. Donovan and Beasley are there. Indication is a short corner. Let's see. Instead, they'll curl it inside, and Sanchez powered it away. So that was more of a decoy. Lewis. Sending it over the top, but it's right at Osvaldo Sanchez, who comes into this match with 285 consecutive shutout minutes. So three-plus games for him. Keller's got the 417 scoreless minutes in World Cup qualifying coming into this game. So two outstanding goalkeepers. Davino up the middle. Oh, kept it on the ground, blocked. Another kick is blocked. Mexico will take it. From the halfway line, that's deflected. Berhalter heads it forward. Sent back by Davino. And they will won that right there with Borghetti. This doesn't look like there's any urgency in Mexico's play. It seems very lax. They played in, they played out. They, they got a little bit of lucky. They tried to clear a ball, and Ayewu was there. But I mean, it just doesn't seem the same Mexican team that we saw playing a few World Cup qualifiers. It just seems very slow, very just relaxed. Like, ah, oh, we know we're already in, it seems like, you know? That is. One of the most controversial figures, you'd have to say, in Mexican soccer right now, Ricardo Lavolte, especially if you ask the legendary Hugo Sanchez, who wants his job and politics for it every chance he gets. I don't get how you lose your job if you qualify for the World Cup. You're in first in your group, and you're still questioning yeah. this guy's methods. I mean, the guy doesn't really lose. He's just got the one tie in this round. Like him or not, right now, the record is outstanding. This ball goes out. The ESPN Classics presentation of U.S. Soccer is brought to you by Budweiser. Bright, crisp, clean, pure, the king of beers. By Phillips. Technology should be as simple as the box it comes in. And by CompUSA. Visit CompUSA today for all your technology needs. Tremendous atmosphere here in Columbus. Fans of both nations rooting on their team. Looking to see their team qualify early tonight for the victory in order to go to Germany. Borghetti. Nelson. Right side. Good to guess. One second. That might be his first touch tonight. Good goal score. Elision there on the far side as play continues. Good advantage ball. Davino. This portion of the match brought to you by Phillips. Mexico holding. Left side, Salcido. Morales. Reina came back. Adiewu there. So far, Adiewu has not strayed far from number nine, Borghetti, at all. Here's McBride. Waits for the help. It was late and behind. Ralston has to hustle back after it. Got a deflection. Reina. Beasley. DeMarcus lets it go. Looked like he thought maybe Sanchez was off the line. But that was too helpful. A little ambitious from, from 40, 45 yards away. But you're right about Anyewu. As a defender, you got to take it personally. He beat you twice last time, and you can see he's taken it personally. He's gotten there. He hasn't let him turn. Borghetti's gotten the ball. He's been elbowing him. He's been pushing him. Hasn't let him get comfortable on the ball. That's what you have to do. You can see right here. Look at this. Beats him to the ball. That's good defending. And you can see he's learned over the last two or three games by watching the tape his mistakes that he's made. And right now, he seems to be on his game. At 6'4", 210, he's got that size edge over Borghetti. But Borghetti has the experience edge. Lewis inside. Knocked out by Sanchez. Lewis beat Sanchez for the only goal the USA scored against Mexico in March. That ball is cleared out. Belongs to Mexico. Eddie Lewis, a left-sided midfielder, now playing left back. Will it be a permanent position? I think it's up to Eddie. He plays well. I think Bruce Arena may keep him there. This is a second opportunity. This is going to be his first big challenge. And, uh, and, and you can't say it. this is his job to lose. Everybody else has been there. Bruce has tried three or four different guys. 
Eddie Lewis has got the job. It's his job to lose. He's left-footed. He can play with Beasley on that side. That side of the field, the left side between those two guys, you've got guys that can cross the ball, guys that can get up and down the field. Two very good players. And if it seems to work out, that left side is going to be very dangerous for the U.S. Hayden plays it across, keeping it on the ground to Burhalter. Eddie Lewis back to Burhalter on Yewu. Reyna back to Burhalter. More possession for the USA. Now they'll try the long ball towards Ralston, who heads it into the middle. Donovan went for it, cleared away by the high foot of Davino. Armas setting it forward. Armas starting in the place of John O'Brien, who played in the Trinidad game. And if you recall, he left that game with an injury. What happens when you take today's sports stories and look at them through the eyes of history? You get a unique new show called Classic Now. Every weeknight at 7 Eastern, host Josh Elliott takes you from yesterday to today and back again. Don't miss Classic Now, where the past is always present. Another takedown of Beasley in front of the referee, Batres. Free kick, United States. Burhalter on the ball. Setting it long. That was McBride. Mexico trying to clear it out. U.S. getting it back. Hader ran up. Quick shot. A bouncer. Sanchez holds on to it, but he struggled on a couple of these shots. At least. To me, not looking that sharp. He didn't hold on to that. It bounced well, off his chest and dropped to the ground. That's two balls that he's dropped. For some reason, there's just no, and I know it's a big qualifier, it's a rivalry, the fans, there seems to be no rhythm to this game. It just seems to be long ball, ball any ball there. Mexico looks nervous again. The U.S. looks a little tentative right now. So, I mean, you don't want to make a mistake early, but you've got to try to play some soccer, get some flow to the game. Can any of this be a little respect or perhaps, dare I say the word, fear of the United States? You know, I don't think it's fear because both, se both teams seem to be a little tentative. The U.S. is doing a good job of defending, but they haven't really had much offensively. And Mexico has hit two or three long balls and tried to get in behind the U.S., but there really hasn't been any kind of rhythm to anybody's game, and that's not like either one of these teams. Certainly a totally different game than the game we saw in March at altitude. In that game, Mexico had three forwards. They got caught offside ten times. But also early in the year, I believe it's a third game, third World Cup qualifier. You win that, you put yourself in a good place. Now they both got 16, one's got 15, and uh, they think that uh, we're pretty much in. Well, the Mexican team, I think, thinks they're pretty much in. They seem to be very relaxed right now. The speed of Beasley, this time on the right wing. Tackle the way. It's a good job by Mexico. Beasley's tough to defend, 1v1 because of his speed and Salcido stopped him. Throw in for the United States. Hate him. From Beasley. Beasley played it back and Hate been wiped out. The play continues. It is always physical when these two clubs meet. Surprisingly, in March, there were only 17 fouls called and the USA had 12 of them. You'll probably see more than that tonight. You're going to see a lot more than 17 tonight. This is a key game. You win, you go to the World Cup, you can relax. You lose, you got one more game. And if the U.S. happens to lose, they got to go to Guatemala, and that's a tough place to play. In the air, not a down. Hater! That's high. That was a tough one because BC was right there in the way of that as Hater probably tried to call him off. A good effort. Ball comes in, he sees a dip, and he's trying to hit underneath it, so it dips up and over the goalkeeper. Just got a little, uh, didn't get underneath it enough for it to dip. Great crowd here in Columbus. You know there'll be a big one in Guatemala on Wednesday. Guatemala lost today, by the way, to Trinidad and Tobago. That's the USA's next destination. And Channel 9, and the USA team headed there on Monday for a game that will be televised Wednesday night. And the U.S. knows that. What a tough place to go. Atmosphere, the environment, everything could happen. Enough, you never know what can happen there. You're playing at home, it's a must. You have to get a win. Get yourself into a position where you're already into the World Cup and give an opportunity for some of these younger kids to get a chance to play. 23rd minute. No big saves yet for either goalkeeper. I have not contested. Keller, by the way, didn't even have to make a save against Trinidad and Tobago in the last qualifier. Here's Morales. This time, we got by Hader, but that last move cost him. Hader, 
trying to stay there with him. Here's Marquez. Low shot. Keller knew that one was wide. Goal kick for the United States. Keller gets ready to put it back into play. How about the USA in their last nine overall games versus Mexico? It's been incredible. Mexico has a big edge overall, Cello, but since 1999, really, this rivalry has belonged more to the United States. One of those things where the U.S. has gotten better and better. All of a sudden, the U.S. gets a professional league. The players start developing. You have to give a lot of credit to the MLS just because the fact it gives the players, these younger players, a place to develop. There would be no Beasley. There would be no Eddie Johnson. There'd be uh, no Twillman if there was no MLS. So you have to give credit to them. That's why the U.S. has had uh, success over the last uh, eight to nine years. In this country, Mexico's last win came in 99 in San Diego. They have not beaten the United States since, nor have they scored a goal against them in this country. Hayden from Ralston. Gave that away to Marquez, who's up high now. And he gets chopped by Reyna. And a yellow card, and Reyna already had one. So that means he will not be able to be playing against Guatemala. So that's a tough one, especially if the USA loses this game. Why not tell you what, Marquez sold that wonderfully. Yeah. He sucked him in with the right foot. Claudia dragged him with the left foot in there, took him down, and got his yellow card. And Marquez stayed down, too, for good effect. Getting the yellow. So the captain gets in the referee's book as this ball is deflected out of play right near that corner flag. It'll be a throw-in for Mexico. Salcido. Sellout crowd here in Columbus. It was sold out immediately once the tickets went on sale. Way to knock that one away. Set back the other way, and that's blocked by Burhalter. The bride. And then headed forward by Armas. Davino. Left side Marquez. Long ball, left side by Galindo. And Keller gets it. This is a World Cup qualifier, and a big one at that. USA versus Mexico. The winner gets an automatic berth in next June's World Cup. And they'll get it with games to spare. That's the significance of this one. The USA had some other scenarios in which to qualify, but they needed help in the other games, and they did not get that in that Trinidad and Tobago Guatemala game. So win, and they're in tonight. And that's the way it should be. You don't want to have to rely on, on Trinidad or, or Panama beating Costa Rica. You don't want to rely on that. you got an opportunity here to seal your fate right here at home in a beautiful atmosphere. Great game. This is an opportunity for you to just finish it, get into the World Cup, and you have to take advantage of this. Of course, the match brought to you by EA Sports. Going for Mexico, and as you had mentioned before, a tie would get them through. They don't have to win. Referee's assistant with some words for Carlos Batros. Maybe something he saw off the ball. But no discipline issue. Donovan. Galindo stopped him. Rodriguez picks it up. Rodriguez and Galindo work that well together. Manieru touching it over to Frankie Hayden from the right. He's going to play it back to Keller. Casey Keller sends it deep. Cleared by Salcido, looking for Fonseca. Burhalter headed it down, somewhat dangerously. Lewis clears, and Marquez put his head down against Reyna. Here's Donovan. Landon still going, trying to leave it off. He's brought down, and there's no foul call. On the left side, Morales. Cut off by Burhalter. Borghetti looks for Morales. So far, Borghetti and Fonseca. Have been neutralized by the United States. And you got to give at least Borghetti credit. He's been showing to the ball, and he's been getting there. But Fonseca hasn't done anything. Here's a run just a minute ago. Landon Donovan getting in there. He gets clipped out there, gets pulled. Landon needs to go down a little sooner, and the referee's going to call. Yeah. He tries to keep possession of it, and the referee says, well, he must have at least advantage, or at least his balance, so he tried to get the ball. There was a foul. You can see the grab clearly there, yeah. but the referee didn't call. And that's what we're talking about, consistency on the referee's part. 28th minute here, USA versus Mexico 
in this CONCACAF World Cup qualifier. The winner qualifies for Germany tonight. Joining just a handful of other countries who are already in. Morales looks, crosses, cleared in the air by Onyewu. Mexico tries to send it back off a miss hit. It's going to go out of play. Germany is the next host of the World Cup, and these are the teams that have already qualified. Ukraine is the newest member, first time that they are in a World Cup, so we congratulate them. They had a draw today, but got a favorable result in another game in their group. That's how they qualified. Had they won, they would have qualified outright. Elena chasing it. Donovan, bumps Borghetti, Marquez, Mexico now sends numbers forward, they see a chance coming, tackle away from Nelson, and it's cleared by Keller. That's how that we saw guys jumping into the play. Right. Finally, they got the ball, Nelson goes right up the middle, Bert Hall does a great job, tackles from behind, knocks the ball into Casey Keller, and, and saves uh, Nelson from trying to take a shot. But that's better for Mexico. They're starting to push forward. They're starting to move their defense out of the back and then get in the offensive third. Sacido. Francisco Rodriguez going forward. Borghetti laid it off. Marquez was a little bit deeper. He keeps it on the ground. Borghetti leaves it for Nelson. Borghetti staying with it. Blocked. What a back heel that was by Borhofer from out of nowhere. Lewis with it on the left. But Bride plays now for Fulham. Open up. Mexico on the ball. Pass by Galindo. Into the middle comes Mexico. More men in green pushing up. Nelson! If he had a better touch, he walks in on a breakaway clean. And he's the last guy to score on Casey Keller. Well, you remember the last goal was the same way. Right up the middle, they play the ball to the outside. Claudio Reyna lets him go by, and they have the same thing. The same thing happened there. Claudio passes him on, nobody picks him up. All of a sudden, he goes in by himself and mistouches it. USA had a fortunate break there, but Nelson's first touch failed him. And you also see everybody mistouching the ball a little bit. Before the game, uh, the U.S. asked the, the, the grounds crew from Columbus to water the field. And that's why you see the ball skipping a lot. It's not that it's been raining, it's just they asked to water the field, so the ball skips a little more. And you've seen you've seen quite a few little dodgy touches. The ball comes in and the touch just isn't there. Beasley blocked. Oh, he gets kicked from behind by Marquez. And play is continuing as the ball goes all the way back to Keller. Well, Beasley's been targeted. There's Marquez again. You've got to give him a yellow at least for persistent infringement. Otherwise. You're making a mockery of it. Marquez can't complain. He should have had one earlier. Well, he doesn't even go look at this. He goes right in there, gets him from behind. He should have gotten the, he should have gotten the card right here for this one. Look at the tackle right there. Comes in, clips him right there. That's the yellow card. He gets another shot at Beasley. Two shots for a yellow card. Look at the referee's position. Look at his angle. He was right there. He didn't call it. That's what we talked about, consistency. If you're going to give him, he should have called the first one, given him a yellow card. The second one never happens. You calm everything down. Plus, the second one could hurt the play. Take him out. Then you've got a worse situation. Cleared by Rodriguez. Got to love the passion, though. Not just on the field, but in the stands. It's a great night in Columbus, Ohio. Glad you're with us tonight on ESPN Classic as Keller has it. An awkward hit by Keller. He got it out of danger, but the USA loses possession. Well, a pass back to the goalkeeper's got to be nice and easy rolls to keep it in the first time. Anyewu rips one back at him. It skips. Casey's got to take a good touch because the ground's wet and then try to clear it. Of course, the match brought to you by Gatorade. Salcido will see that ball roll out. It belongs to the United States. 33rd minute in this World Cup qualifier. USA and Mexico 
CONCACAF's best rivalry, and then Hader collides. And Nelson is still down. This is what we talked about. Good touch here. He touches it over him. Frankie comes in, sticks his leg up. That, that to me, is a yellow card. Yeah. Look like knee Real knee, simple. right? Real, look at the way he puts up his foot. He's going around him. Oh, yeah. Boom. That's a yellow card. Absolutely. Free kick coming from Mexico. The good thing no. for them is that and Nelson's you, okay. Yeah, and if you're going to go by the referee, Frankie gets one more before he gets a yellow card like he did with Marquez. Right. Because that, to me, was more of a yellow card than, than the one earlier in the game for Claudio. Oh, for sure. For Reynos. Yeah. Ramon Morales plays for Chivas of Guadalajara, one of several players on this team to play for that club in Mexico. They're playing short to Galindo, right back to Morales. Going inside, Marquez with the run, Galindo the cross. Several players up on Yeager, won it in the air. Nelson comes around, puts it over Keller. The following fans have been selected for tonight's halftime contest. Retaining Brownsburger of Louisville, Ohio. Adam Tilton. USA's all-time leader in wins and shutouts. One win, obviously, away from 50. So dependable, though, right now in goal for the United States. Well, you're about 35 minutes in the game, and he really hasn't been tested. The only, the only thing he's been tested is balls back to his feet because they've been to a few bad balls. Hayden goes to the right. We want a Donovan, cleared by Salcido. McBride, Lewis, keeping it on the ground to Chris Armas, who plays for the Chicago Fire of Major League Soccer. Reyna, McBride, wide, now inside, but to Sanchez. Marquez sends it over. That's Galindo. Hayden. Salcido on the left. Right between the benches he goes. Salcido over the top and the offside flank is up on Galindo. Mexico guilty of the offside infraction in the 36th minute. This weekend, MLS players as well as USA and Mexican national team stars are autographing the game jerseys to be put up for an online auction. All proceeds will benefit the victims of Hurricane Katrina. If you'd like to help out, for more, log on to MLSnet.com or USsoccer.com. The color clearance to McBride. Headed away by Rodriguez to Galindo. Then Burhalter, Lewis after it with Nelson. Two number sevens get there. Mexico has help. Morales makes the run. The flag goes up. Okay, took a chance. He stopped the run and put his arm up, and sometimes that backfires. USA with the ball and Ralston. Ralston holds things up. Off the Donovan touch, he wanted Hayden. Anyewu switches over on the opposite side to Muscle Morales. Anyewu, that was well done on the ball with some skill. Back to Keller, though. Again, they're putting Casey, the USA, in some uncomfortable positions with his feet. They're playing back too much. It seems they want to knock it, knock it. They got nothing. They play back to Casey Keller. Sometimes it's better off touching the ball to the right or to the left and just whacking it upfield yourself instead of always playing it back to the keeper. This portion of the match brought to you by Nike. 37th minute. The winner of this match, USA versus Mexico, automatically qualifies tonight for World Cup 2006. Armas. Beasley. DeMarcus chased back to Berhalter. On Yale. Off a block. Morgetti brings it down. Thought he had some help. On Yale again back to Keller. Morgetti's going to put on some pressure. Forcing Keller to sort of shank that ball. Donovan couldn't get that in the air. Morales. Hayden. I thought he was going to get booked because that was the second one. Let's watch the referee, Carlos Patres. But he didn't give it. Here's Davino. Rodriguez. 
Cut off by Reyna. Nice ball movement to Donovan, and then he lost it there. Marquez. That's Fonseca. Look how deep he's been playing right there. He's been ineffective so far tonight. Complete contrast to what you and I saw of him in Mexico. It's a completely different player. Hasn't seen the ball, hasn't really gotten into good position. He's playing more in the midfield. If, if you watch Mexico, they're almost in a 4 5 1 with Rodriguez by himself and Fonseca dropping into the midfield. If you're the USA, I would think you'd like that. If Fonseca's going to drop back further, he's not going to be a danger to your club. Tackled out by Mexico. USA will have a throw in. Hate it. Claudio Reyna. Inching forward. Reyna wanted the grind. Rodriguez clears. Headed up by Ralston. Armas. He and Galindo collided. Foul on Mexico. Chris Armas trying to earn a spot at the next World Cup. He had the squad made in 2002, but had a serious knee injury. He was going to be in the Olympic team in 2000, but another injury took him out of that competition, too. So he's had some hard luck. Good to see him back competing. Reyna, long, headed up. Galindo should win it. He does, but he gave it away. Armas in a battle with Colorado. Two tough midfielders. Mexico wins the ball and comes out on the left. Morales. Doubled up. He'll play it back. Salcido. Blocked by Ralston. 40th minute. Neither goalkeeper has been tested so far in this first half. Corrado's pass, right side. Right back on Marquez. At the halfway line, Mexico goes forward. Back to Marquez. His team, Barcelona, last year were the champions in La Liga in Spain. One of Marquez's teammates, of course, Suanolino. Rodriguez. Back to Davino. To Salcido. Can play inside or outside. And that's tackled away. Good job by Hayek denying that sideline again. And that was good pressure by Landon Donovan. Chasing him down, chasing him, using the sideline as a defender, sets him up. Frankie Hayek comes in and slides out and knocks the ball out of bounds. Davino plays it across to Rodriguez. Back to Davino. Nearly 41 minutes gone in this first half. On a bounce, it goes all the way back to Kelly. Earlier today, how about Trinidad and Tobago with a win and Stern John with a couple of goals. After that game against the USA, Bruce Arena said Trinidad and Tobago might surprise some teams the rest of the way. And one game later, they come out with a win under Leo Benhocker. Yeah, we saw Leo Benhocker, and we got to speak to him. That is a team that's much more organized, and their players, you can see, have respect, and they know what they have to do under Benhocker. Free kick coming up here. Bruce Arena also told us today about the importance of restarts because all of these games between these two countries are generally close ones. One mistake can do it. Good set piece here. Make sure you follow up. It's wet. Sanchez seems to be dropping a lot of the balls. He's got to be making sure that somebody follows up if there's just in case of the rebound. Lewis and Reyna again on this free kick. On the whistle. Lewis low and wide. Ladies and gentlemen. 43rd minute, Mexico will have the ball. Eddie Lewis coming up at halftime, now playing for Leeds United, started out at UCLA, good career with San Jose, and now on to better things, shit England. Davino on the left. Plays it to the halfway line, that's on Yehu denying Borghetti. Haydick again. Well, I talked before about persistent infringement. That's why the Mexico coaching staff is up. That's what they want. 
a call for that. Well, that's three. Yeah. Three fouls, you think, but now, but that's what we talked about consistently in the referees. You give Claudio Reyna for his first foul, didn't kill him, just right. sweep them a little bit. He gets a yellow card. Frankie Haddock failed to foul the same guy, or fouled three different times and hasn't got anything, so. Time running out of this first half of play. A draw against Mexico into the next World Cup. It would not qualify the United States tonight. They need a win. There's still three games to go, but both teams would love to clinch early. Broken up by Armas. Marquez brought down by Burhalter. Play is continuing. Rodriguez in the 44th minute. Galindo. That's broken up. Mario Reyna back to Burhalter. Over the top, they want a Donovan. Instead, it's Morales and Walston battling. A deflected ball towards the Mexico bench. It goes out. It belongs to the United States. Throw it from Hayden. Walston. Reyna. Hanyewu. In the middle, it's Burhalter. Back to Claudia Reyna. USA's captain sends it up for Walston. Nodded it towards Hayden. Mexico breaks it up. Salcido to Morales. He gets whacked by Ralston. Play continues. McBride. And he gets taken down. Here's the cross. McBride is still down. Galindo clears it. Looking around to see what hit him. Part of the game, and when U.S., Mexico, the little fouls after you pass the ball, the little clip in the heel, the little shot in the back, and you've seen it all night. It's been happening. The referee's going to let some of that stuff go. More so than against any other team in the region. No doubt, no doubt. But this is the one game that you probably shouldn't let it go because it's such a big rivalry they can get carried away. Galindo. This one headed for stoppage time. One minute. Added on. Marquez. Left there by Galindo. Fonseca. Bad place to foul. Especially this late in the half. This will be probably Mexico's first great scoring chance, at least on a set piece. What are the chance? When Nelson had in, when he touches it, yep. gets it in, touches it too far, and this will be the other one. This is the most important kick of this first half. It could end up being the last one. Three players deep on this. As the wall is being set up. Now two players back, including Marquez, who's the deepest. Morales shot, save him! Corner kick coming up. And I tell you, the U.S. got lucky there because Casey Keller pushes that wide. If Casey Keller happens to push that on the field, you had Rodriguez, number two, all by himself on top of the 18, making a run unmarked. And Morales shot. Nice save from Keller. Keeping it scoreless. Morales in the corner. Headed up. Now out of play. And that's going to do it for the first half. A scoreless first half, but a very physical one. Casey Keller coming up very big here at the end. This is what we're talking about. Keepers have to come up with big save. Look at this ball skipping. Casey Keller's right there. Gets a hand and pushes it out of bounds. And that's a great play because the fact that if you watch from this angle, watch the ball bounce and skip, and look at Rodriguez right there by himself. If Casey Keller happens to push that in, he's in trouble. A great look from the Phillips goal cam right there from behind, I tell you what. Great look from Casey. You see him, he reads it, he watches it skip, and pushes it out of bounds for a corner kick. So the USA and Mexico waged a friendly battle here in the first half of play. It ended up scoreless. Coming up at halftime, a look at current left back Eddie Lewis, a player who starred for four years in Major League Soccer, but a guy who could have played in another sport. I've always been trying to uh, prove people wrong, whether it was my dad from when I decided that 
I didn't want to be a professional tennis player and I really enjoyed soccer for some reason.